say from the Redneck Garage? Well, you've seen me grind on parts, you've seen me wire wheel parts, you've seen me sandblast parts, and today we're going to be working on some more rusty parts because this Jeep was from New Jersey and every freaking thing on it is rusted. <laughs> we're going to be using electricity to see if we can get some rust off some of the parts that we're using. Now I'm pretty familiar with this type of process because I work for the gas company here in Franklin, United Cities Gas, and in your gas lines that go up to the house in the olden days before they used plastic, they would just run bare steel pipe. Now the bare steel pipe, if it wasn't protected in some way, uh, of course it would actually just rust out and then you'd have gas flowing up through your yard and when you got a real green spot you know that's where the gas leak is. <laughs> but what they used was called cathodic protection and they would take a bag with a magnesium anode in it and they would connect it to the gas line and before the pipe rust that anode would take that rust uh, action and it would actually corrode, and the anodes would, when the anode was gone, then the pipe would start rusting. So that's basically the same principle as we're using here, using a low current to cause rust to pop off of it. Now, if you were to keep this on your truck and it was grounded to the ground, you, it would never rust. But because it's not grounded to the earth, trucks aren't, this won't work for that. So if you ever see one of those uh, cathodic protection for your vehicle, a bunch of crap, won't work. So let's get going to see how we're going to remove the rust off of a rusty drive shaft that I took out. Uh, and see what it looks like. So there's the axle and it is pretty rusted up. So we're going to try the electrolysis method on it and see how much it takes off of this rust. This part I can wire wheel really easy. But this part was really kind of a pain to sandblast and everything. So let's try that and see how it works. Alright, so basically this is all you need for your science experiments. You need a bucket. Uh, this is a Home Depot one, which is much better than the rest of them. <laughs> Some Arm & Hammer uh, super washing soda. It's not baking soda, it's washing soda. You can get that in the detergent now. This one was like four bucks. And uh, some rebar. It's a piece of rebar and you need the rebar for a conductor. It acts as an anode for it actually. And an old battery charger. Alright, so let's get to the procedure. Okay, here's our water and we got to put in our washing soda. Now I found you don't have to be super exact with that. About a little bit. About, it says four tablespoons, but I just throw in a little bit and we're good to go. It really doesn't do, it isn't part of the chemical process. It does help it come off a little bit, but that should be good. We'll stir it up a little. All right, we got a rebar. I'll just stir it up with the rebar. What the heck? And get our washing powder mixed up. All right. Now you can wire this to the side, you can do a lot of different things. I'm going to put a clip on the rebar just to hold it in place because you don't want it to touch whatever you're trying to uh, clean off. So I'll put a little clip on that. Okay, so here's our drive shaft and uh, if we were doing something small, we'd take a wooden board and go across the top and use like a leader on there. But because this is so big, I'm just going to dump this whole thing down in there, being very careful not to touch the... Uh, rod. So we got our pieces in there. I can put a little more water in actually. The more water you have, you just have to have your rebar out of the top of it. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now it's time to hook up the electrical. Alright, so I got my battery charger out here and this is the important part, right? <laughs> You want to hook your positive up to your rebar. Don't hook it up to the part that you're doing. You want to hook it up to the rebar portion. You want to hook this hot lead up to the rebar and the negative lead to whatever you're getting the rust off of. Now the axle works pretty good because it's, you know, um, steel and it sits in there. But you can put a board across and you can cook up different configurations of leads. It just needs to make a contact. So we're going to plug in our charger and put it at the lowest amper setting, like a 2 amp. Uh, if you can see on the charger... There's a 2 amp setting right down there and that's what we're going to use to take this rust off. Let's plug it up and see what happens. Hopefully not a bunch of sparks, right? Okay, and here's my Harbor Freight battery charger that I've used, I don't know, five, I don't know, 10 or 12 times maybe. And uh, we're going to do some maintenance to it. Piece of crap! Yes, they're right. I tried to use it and, and the stupid thing is broken. So we're going to file it in our crappy tool bin here. Stupid Harbor Freight crap. I'm gonna go get another charger. Okay, I'm leaving AutoZone and I got a Schumacher 6 2 amp. It was 40, 40 bucks. 
Now we'll say this, the dumber the battery charger you can use the better because the ones that are automatic and stuff sense weird stuff. And this is a manual charger and it's going to throw out 2 amps or 6 amps and that's it. And that's what I want. So we're going to hook this one up and see how it works. And it's not from Harbor Freight! I'm not sure how well it translates, but you can see the bubbling and you can see kind of the brackish part, the uh, stuff coming up to the top. And basically what's happening is the charge is going from the uh, negative charge attracted to the positive and the steel uh, rebar is actually giving itself up for this process. Now the good metal that's on the drive shaft is actually popping off the rust and that's what you're seeing floating around the top of it. And this type of process works well for things that are hard to get around like um, say the U-joints and the drive shaft where it's hard to get something up in there. Um, it actually pops that rust off rather than having to physically remove it like with a sand blaster. So after this is done it's going to be really cool to see how it works but it's got to sit in here for a while. So the other thing that you want to remember is you never want to do this inside. This creates uh, the gas bubbles are actually hydrogen which if you filled up your garage with hydrogen there'd be a good explosion of that. So don't do that. But uh, this is really a good way and cheap, super cheap. If you've got a battery charger, not a Harbor Freight one that doesn't work, but if you have a battery charger <laughs> Um, it's pretty cheap to put some rebar and some washing soda in there and turn on your battery charger. Alright, she's been in here most of the day and there's some schmegma on the top. Um, so we're going to unplug it, unhook it, and take a look at it. That's about all I'm going to do. I think it's done. It's still bubbling though. Wow, that looks great. We'll take a little better look at it. Let me lay it down. Okay, and you can see this is just all real loose stuff. All the rust is pretty much gone. And that's just like a film. So give me a minute. I'm going to wash this off. We're going to hit it with a wire brush real quick take a look at it but man that looks really good okay so I took a pressure washer to it and it knocked most of that little bit of uh, flaky stuff off and let me tell you that thing looks great we're gonna hit it with a wire wheel just real quick but man you can see where it stops right there the difference how cool is that that stuff works great here it is after I hit it with the wire wheel and you can see how clean that is and rust free up to this point where it stopped it was out of the water so this is super cool um, we're gonna be putting in a new u-joint in here and I'm gonna do a separate little video about that but I, I am impressed a, a bucket a battery charger and some soap and that's what you come out with and that worked great okay well that worked super great and uh, I couldn't be happier the way that it turned out we're gonna clean the knuckle in there from the other side I'm gonna leave it in there probably a a year because <laughs> it's so rusty but we're gonna see how that comes out but that's how you do it man it's really super simple some of that soap uh, battery charger and a piece of rebar man and you can have it come out like that and no effort stick it in there and let her rip so I was really super happy about that you can clean a lot of different parts with that uh, and it will bring back some functionality to it I'm gonna be doing a couple uh, instructional videos like how to do the shoe joint front brakes like five minute videos so you ever need to know how to do that and you haven't done it before you can go back and look at those we've got a rough country video coming up awesome so anyway we're getting going on the passenger side it looks really good man i couldn't be happier i'm david from redneck garage keep turning wrenches